So, welcome back to the Gizfab channel and welcome to another new video series. And in this series, I'm going to be showing you my process when it comes to turbocharging the Nissan Micra K11. So, the subject of this new video series is Thomas's Black Super S. Now, the Super S is the most sought after model of the K11 Micra. Now, the Super S models came with a handful of features that were not present on other models of the K11 Micra. Most noteworthy is the front bumper, a very sought after bumper in the Micra circles. It also came with a different rear bumper, a specific style of interior, factory fitted with the 1.3 litre CG13 engine, a rear disc brake system fitted as factory, and it also came without features such as power steering and aircon to truly make this the driver's choice. Now the 1.3 litre CG13 fitted as standard in these cars produces a whopping 75 horsepower but with its go-kart like handling it really is a very very fun car to drive. So what happens when you've exhausted your pleasure and the 75 horsepower is no more? Well, we turbocharge it. And of course the most important thing when it comes to turbocharging the car is we need a manifold in order to bolt the turbocharger to it. So there are plenty of turbo options out there when it comes to turbocharging your Nissan Micra. Now most people make the mistake of buying the cheapest turbo they can find on eBay which is usually like a 2860-ish um, which is way 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 too big for a 1300. Um, for most people it's the right turbo because it's the price they want to pay um, a, a decently sized turbo is usually the wrong turbo because it's well out of their budget scope so when i was approached to build this car i was asked what turbo i would select now i believe i went with garrett's gbc 14200 uh, but the power target that thomas was looking for was not within the scope of that turbo so we looked at the gbc 2250 i believe that's what it is uh, and then we're after a bit of research we found this turbo here. So this is a Garrett GT20. Now on paper, it's a better turbo than the GBC series. It should spool a bit quicker, but also carry power a bit further into the rev range. It's also a nice compact unit as well, which helps when packaging the turbo into the engine bay. And then as well as the turbocharger, we're going to be using a GFB EX38 for ultimate boost control on the setup. Now, this is a bit overkill, but Thomas does want a bit of scream and noise on boost and uh, the only real way to do that is with an external wastegate. Plus, uh, you know, we want to go all out on this build uh, as far as we physically can go. So it makes sense to have some more shiny products in the engine bay. So the most important part when it comes to turbocharging a non-turbo engine is the manifold. Without a manifold, we can't bolt the turbo to the engine. So that's where we're going to start off this first episode. Now, we need to make a fixture in order to make the manifold, but we can't make the fixture until we have built a collector. So that is going to be our first job, is we're going to go build a merge collector. So there we go, that is our turbo merge collector. All done, all welded up, ready for use on this manifold. Now, the next stage, what we need to do is we need to make a fixture. Now, a fixture is going to allow us to make a jig, and then that jig is going to allow us to make this manifold all on the bench without having to come back and forth to the car every two seconds to check fitment. Now, I've already made ourselves a little fixture. Now, the purpose of this fixture is that when you put it on the engine, 
is that it serves a purpose to locate where the turbo flange is, is in relation to the cylinder head. Now, if we come and get our collector here, our collector is going to sit underneath like so. So what we're just going to do now is we need to go make a negative pattern of this fixture. And then from that we can finally start to fabricate all of the primaries and runners of the turbo manifold. And there we go, we've got the manifold all tacked up, ready for a nice deep welding session. Now I've removed it from the fixture and I've come and placed it on the engine on the car, just to make sure I've got no clearance issues. Uh, I've also got a nice gap down here between the first primary and the alternator bracket. And then we also had to dodge, there's like a little pipe which comes underneath uh, cylinder three and four for this PCV breather to the rock cover. Now I've had to bring out the runners sort of sweeping outwards to clear that pipe, uh, but we have got uh, a good air gap between the manifold and that pipe. But that has caused a secondary issue, which is an issue we're gonna tackle in the next video, and that is a down pipe. Now we expect this build with a two and a half inch down pipe, and uh, we're not going to get a two and a half inch down pipe down there. So we're going to have to do something with the radiator, which we'll tackle in a future video uh, when we do the down pipe. So yeah, this video is all about the manifold and I'm happy where we are. Now, there's one slight uh, mess up on my part and that is the wastegate. Now, unfortunately, uh, the factory slam panel doesn't exactly clear the wastegate um, as much as I would like, um, I mean, it's not the best example because the, the slam panel is pretty bent on this car already. This is how it arrived to us. Uh, but with the uh, with this panel in place, um, it just about touches the wastegate, which uh, isn't going to be ideal. Now, I have trimmed out a lot of this area already. Uh, this is where the horns and that sit. Now we've had to trim that anyway to clear the boost pipes and everything from the turbo. I think what I'm going to do now is, uh, as part of the, the manifold redo, I'm going to cut this uh, wastegate flange off the, the collector and I'm going to angle it ever so slightly downwards uh, and that's going to clear this slam panel. But for me, that little snafu is an easy fix. So I'm going to take that one on the chin and we're going to get that rectified. Now what we've got to do is we're going to get this back off the car. We're going to take it back over to the welding bench and we're going to get this manifold welded up. And now that the manifold is fully welded, we're going to leave it bolted to the soak bar overnight. And then we'll come back in the morning and remove it from the soak bar. So there we go, one completed turbo manifold. Really happy with how this manifold has come out. So uh, the next step is, is that we need to go get this bolted to our engine.
So there we go, we have got the manifold bolted on, we've got our turbo bolted on, we've got our wastegate on the manifold and we have got our turbo oil drain as well. Just waiting for a silicon joiner to come in so we can connect uh, this drain to the sump. So uh, yeah, that concludes this part of this build series. So if you've got any questions about turbocharging your micro that relates to the content in this video, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer your question uh, as best I can. So next on the agenda is we're gonna do the downpipe. Um, that's gonna be a completely separate part of this build series. So look out for that video within the next couple of weeks or so. And with that being said, I wanna thank you for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying this build series so far. This is the first episode and uh, yeah, look forward to completing this car and getting this car done running and back to the customer. We'll see you in the next video.